Hello everyone and welcome to Learning with Law. Today we're going to talk about extension. How can you effectively extend in your VIP Kid classrooms? Before we get started, I really want to thank my subscribers for being here and watching my video. And if you haven't subscribed already, now is your chance. <laughs> Please make sure you hit that subscribe button and ding the bell so you'll be the first to know about my videos. If you really enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. Thank you so much. So here's what we're going to talk about today. What is extension? When do we extend? And why do we extend? What is the point? <laughs> We're given all of our lessons already pre-made. We don't have to plan. We don't have to grade. Why are we extending? What's the point? And how do we extend? What is an effective way to extend in your classrooms? There are different ways that you can extend with your higher level and lower level students and I'm going to show you today. I'm going to give you some real life examples from my classroom so that you can get a better understanding of what to do with extensions. Okay, so let's get started. What is extension? A lot of teachers talk about it. They talk about it at length in VIP Kid, but what does it mean to extend? Well, in my opinion, when you extend, you are going beyond what the objectives are asking you to do. So in VIP Kid, you are always given an, a lesson objective. So if you're extending, you're meeting those needs and going beyond. You're teaching more than just if the, if the objective says that the students will learn the colors blue, green, and red, guess what? You are probably teaching pink and orange as well. That is your extension. You're meeting the needs and going beyond what the lesson is asking you to do. When should you extend? That's a major question that a lot of teachers have. It's a major question that a lot of teachers have because they have to deal with students that are arriving late to class. So sometimes you're going to be faced with a lesson that maybe the student is coming in 10 minutes before the 25 minute mark and you have a class right after this one that you are currently in. So there's not time for you to extend and that is totally okay. There are also small opportunities that you can find without the lesson and I will show you that as well. But really when you're extending, that should be after you have met the needs of the objectives. So if your student is supposed to learn the numbers one through 10, and they're not quite understanding numbers seven and eight, I really don't think extending to 11 and 12 is appropriate for that student. So you wanna make sure that you're meeting the needs of the objective before moving forward into extension. If they have mastered certain vocabulary and they have met those requirements for the lesson, why not teach them a new word? And there is plenty of room to do that. Why should you extend? Well, who doesn't like free stuff? I know that the parents enjoy getting things for free and what will they be getting? Their child will be getting more education for free. So as long as you are, again, meeting the requirements of the objectives, you were able to go beyond what the slides are allowing and teach their child something new, something that is not already listed on the screen. And parents like this because quite frankly, they could probably teach their child everything that is listed on the screen. They could, um, if they had the time or energy to have their kids sit down and, and work with them. But they wanna see that you're doing something different, something that's outside the box and something that they wouldn't think of doing. So you're the expert. Bring your expertise to the table and get those parents to book you again. If they see that you're effectively extending with their child, they're gonna wanna keep booking you and your schedule will fill up. If you're having problems with bookings, I also have um, a link here that will give you some more tips on how to increase your bookings. What else does extension do and why do we extend? Well, it helps you to lengthen your lesson. If you're someone who is struggling to get to that 25 minute mark, if you extend, I'm telling you, you will have no problem teaching up to the 25 minute mark. It's going to help you expand your lessons. Your students are going to learn a lot more and you will have <laughs> no problem meeting that 25 minute mark. It's also going to keep your students engaged. I have a couple level two students where if they're learning about um, 
there's a there's a unit about school or school terms or things that have to do with school and it gets pretty repetitive so you need to start extending in order to keep those kids engaged and excited about what they're learning it also strengthens the the students vocabulary what I love to do especially in that unit for level two is when they're talking about <laughs> clicking a mouse, which I, I'm not really sure that this is a, a real important school term that needs to be like driven home in lesson throughout lesson. Um, for some reason, they, they talk about clicking a mouse. Can you click the mouse? Can you circle with the mouse? So I <laughs> start teaching homographs. Can you click with the mouse? No, I cannot click with the mouse. So it's teaching that, hey, they know what this is. They know it's a mouse. Can they click with it? No. <laughs> can they click with this? Yes. And they can see it's the same word, but now they're expanding their vocabulary. They understand that these two words have the same spelling, but there is a different meaning. It also helps to build rapport. Yes, it helps you to get to know your student a little bit more. It helps the student to get at ease. And if you're asking questions or adding different vocabulary um, that might pertain to their lives, they're more able to talk about it. They're more open to talk and engage about the specific vocabulary or task or whatever the case may be. So it helps you to build rapport. And who doesn't love to build rapport with their students? <music> Some of you may or may not know, I'm an actual English teacher to 10th grade students here in Orlando, Florida, and you can check out some of my videos here about cleaning out my classroom and what's going to happen when we go back to school in the fall. Um, but I am a person that thinks quickly on their feet. I have to when I'm teaching in a high school, so and being able to extend when necessary. But it's also really important that you plan ahead. I always like to plan before my lesson to make sure that I know what I'm getting myself into and I can see how I can ex extend with my students. Some students, as you will see with some of the clips that I'm going to show you, are a little bit more advanced and some students are a little bit behind and I show you how I extend with all types of students. And I am able to do this with ease because I am planning effectively. So if you're someone that doesn't really know how to plan, I will also link a video here so you can get some idea as to how I plan for my classrooms. All right, and here we go for my favorite part of the video. I'm really excited. I don't know why, I just really like to extend. I think it's more fun for me. Like I said, I'm I'm a teacher in an actual public school here in Orlando, Florida, and I just don't like sticking to the curriculum. I like to expand. I like to move outside of what already is being taught. For me, it gets boring. I like to personalize it. I like to make sure that my students are being engaged in the activity. It's something that connects with them. So for me, extension is a lot of fun and I wanna make it fun for you as well. So what can we do to extend for our lower level students? Because a lot of teachers struggle with this. They don't know, you know, the students, what do they know? Uh, they, their vocabulary is limited. How can I extend with them? What can I do? So here are some suggestions for you. Always extend with rewards. That's the easiest way to extend. You're going to give them something. You're going to give them a star. So you might as well give them something tangible too. Um, when I first started with VIP Kid, I said, um, what is holding up a flower? How is that going to excite them? I, I don't really understand. But for some of the lower lower level students, they really enjoy getting a tangible reward even though it's on this side of the screen. They like to see what you have to show them. So you can do that with different objects that you have. So for example, I have a flower reward and I'll usually hold up two and I'll ask them which color and I'll put it on my my magnetic board back here and they like it and I can teach the word flower I can teach colors I can teach numbers I can say how many petals again teaching a new vocabulary um, and also we're counting you can talk about numbers shapes um, what I love to use and I I'll, I'll link it here as well, is one of my favorite extensions is um, my pick a number board. And I'll show that later on because I actually am using that with the higher level students and I changed it to pick a word. So you're going to find out more about that. But I'll link that video here just so you can check it out and see how I've created that external reward. Um, I like to extend with songs. When I extend with songs, first of all, especially for the low, 
lower level students, especially for the level one classes, they tend to go a little bit quickly depending on the student that you have. So I try to slow it down a little bit without repeating the same vocabulary over and over again. Um, I like to, on the song slides, have the students read through the song before we actually sing it because if they don't know the words, they're going to just stare at you when you're singing in the background. So you want to make sure that you're going through the songs and emphasizing certain words. Depending on the level of the student, or depending on how well you know your student, you know that maybe they can't speak in full sentences, or or they there's somebody that, <laughs> that can actually read the entire song, because I have a student that does that as well. But some students, I have a student that's very limited and, and has not opened up yet, and will only say a few words, and I'm going to show you a clip from him as well, but I know what I can do with my students. So I will say certain words and underline certain words and have him circle the word or circle the object. So I see that he is comprehending what we're, what we're talking about. And for my higher level ones, I'll have them read through the song before we actually sing it. So that's a way to extend upon what you're teaching within the classroom because for some of the songs it might not teach what mariachi is yet in the lesson but you are getting them exposed to that for what they're going to see later on. So for any of the levels, quite honestly, but more so for the lower levels, you can look at any of the slides that they have, circle something in the picture, and ask the student if they know what that is. Chances are they're not going to, and sometimes they do, and then you'll know your student and know how much more you can extend with them. So if you circle a tree, which is in most of the lesson slides, quite frankly, you can teach them tree. You can say, what color is the tree? Is this tree taller or shorter than something else. So use what is there for you, but always make sure that you are obviously extending beyond what the curriculum is asking you to do. Blank slides. Do not just skip over those. Make sure you know exactly where the blank slide is, especially for the level ones and twos. You can have them flip to the slide and write out the letter that they are learning for the day or the number, or you can have them now, depending on, again, where they are in level one, you can have them draw a picture of whatever the vocabulary is. So make sure that you're using those blank slides to your advantage, because I use them constantly, especially when teaching new letters and having the students draw those letters, because sometimes it's not something that is available within the slides themselves. Sometimes they will ask you to trace the letter, but sometimes they won't. So this is going to help practice with their, their writing abilities too, and their fine motor skills. Phonics don't have to be boring, especially for the level ones and twos. What I like to do is expand with my phonics slides. So if you're given a slide like this, that's showing b, 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 and the student knows from the last lesson, give them a new word, b, b, bear. B, b, bike, b, b, bell. And if you haven't already, subscribe and ring that bell. <laughs> Here's another one of my examples from one of my favorite regulars. We're doing a unit assessment and I felt like he can extend a little bit more beyond what was necessary. So check it out.
have some different things for the higher level students. And you could do so much more extension with the higher levels because they just have that vocabulary there. So when a student is reading within either the e-reader or just any of the readings on the slide, you can focus on a word, circle it, underline it, whatever you need to do, and ask them, do you know what this word means? Sometimes they do and they just can't speak it. They can't say it in English. Sometimes they have no idea and other times they will just tell you the meaning. And in that case, great. Now you, you learned a little bit more about your student. And then you can take it a step further and ask them to use that word in a different sentence or ask them about the word specifically. Um, do they like whatever the word is or have they played whatever the word is or there's so much you can do <laughs> with words, especially when you're looking at the readers. So make sure you're using that to your advantage. You can also ask the students to give you an example of that word. So I have a specific ex example of a student where I say, can you give me um, an example of the word trustworthy? What does that word mean? Or um, who do you know that is trustworthy in your life? or are you trustworthy? So having them really connect with that word has them to build upon what they already know and just take it a little bit further. And it also personalizes it for them as well. They were making them part of the lesson. It's personal to them and, and you're not a robot just teaching them the same thing over and over and over again all day. <laughs> you wanna make sure that they are engaged in the lesson. I know that in level four, the previous unit spoke about animals and where they lived. So when moving into this next unit, I asked my student, or what animals live in the mountains? After speaking about which dress was longer and the longest, I asked my student which dress she would like to wear and where she would like to wear the dress. Phonics is another way to extend as well. You're going to get students that breeze through that phonics slide and they read all of them out to you. You can do this actually with the lower levels as well. You can hold up the word or the beginning of the word, the end of the word, the middle of the word. So for the lower levels, I use app. You can grab your dry erase marker and choose another letter that might not be on the slide and have them sound out this word. It doesn't have to be a real word. It could be a word that you make up, but you want to see that they are grasping um, the concept of app and they know how to pronounce it. So I, I do that again with my lower level students. Um, we can make up a word, we can we can have our own, you know, actual word tag. And I love to use <laughs> my my joy note um, magnetic letters. I, I use them like all the time. And I like that they gave me a whiteboard too so I can write all over this and I can erase and I can move the letters and they stick and it's fantastic. So love, love, love. And I talk a little bit more about this actually in my other video that I will link below a top 10 teacher must-haves for VIP Kid and I will link that below. Using sight words in sentences. This is kind of difficult to do with the lower level students unless you know that your student is a little bit more advanced. Um, it could work with uh, with level three students. I don't, some level twos can possibly do this, but if you click on a word or circle a word or underline a word and say, it's one of their sight words that they're reading every single lesson. You know they know how to read it. Ask them to use that word in a sentence or you can ask them a question about the word and see how they respond to it. See if they understand the meaning of the word because again, th granted, they're just sight words. They're words that they need to know how to read, but see if they understand the meaning of the word. You can also use blank slides for the higher level students and I use them all the time with spelling of their phonics words, um, their high frequency words, or um, just any words that I feel that they were struggling with throughout the lesson. I can um, pull up the blank slide and say, okay, can you spell phone and see how they do with that. So I love using the blank slides. You can always make sure you use them to your advantage. There is plenty of things that you can do with that with extensions. Um, Extending with my higher level kids, I actually do this with some of my level twos if I know that they can handle it. So like I said before, I have a really great external reward that I use. Usually it's pick a number. Okay, and I, I linked that earlier. I will also link it down below so you can check that video out. But I've changed it to pick a word. Ah, as one of my words falls down. Okay, <laughs> so make sure your post-its are sticky before you do this. And you can hold up some of the words that were in the reading. This is actually coming from a level 
six student, I believe. Yeah, I think it's either a five or six student. Um, these are some words that are they're commonly seen throughout the lesson. So I wanted to make sure that I pulled them onto my external reward. I will say pick a word. They'll tell me the word. I'll rip it off. And until they get a star, obviously I'll have them keep going. They have five stars on there. Once they find them, they'll get a star. I make a whole big deal about it. Um, if you see that your time is, is still <laughs> like you are at 15 minutes and um, you're almost done with your slides, you can also take these words off and say to them, um, give me a sentence with the word detail in it. Or um, ask them, what was, what was one of the details that you remember from the story we read earlier? Something like that. So that's why I like using these. I have tons of them already pre-made from previous lessons um, and I make sure I label the bag level four and on here I have which class they, they um, correspond to. So this is a great way to organize your external rewards and again I think it's extremely valuable. It helps to build vocabulary and to strengthen the students um, speaking and reading skills. And again, parents like this. They want to see that your rewards are educational. So why not give them what they want? And you'll keep getting those bookings. So there you have it. Those are just some of extensions that I use with both my higher and lower level students. And again, it just depends on how well you know your student. Um, if you have a higher higher level two student and you know that you can push them and take them a little bit further, have them define words for you. It doesn't mean that you need to only do that with your level fives or sixes. If you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up and make sure that you subscribe to my channel. And guess what? I would love to hear from you. So what are your favorite extensions that you use within the classroom? I would love to know. Drop a comment below and please share the love. <laughs>